I welcome all of you for MOC videos. It's time to learn. So in the last class, we discussed about DDA line drawing algorithm. So the main disadvantage of DDA line drawing algorithm is you may get a floating point x comma y values. So in that time, you are going to perform a round operation. To avoid that disadvantage, we are going into next line drawing algorithm. That's Bresenham's line drawing algorithm. The main advantage of this line drawing algorithm is it will perform only integer calculation. So we are not going to worry about a floating point value. So let's consider type 1. So already we know that there are four different lines are there. Now we are going to derive an algorithm which supports type 1. As we all know line type 1 is line start from left and end at right with m is less than or equal to 1. Whenever the slope value is less than or equal to 1, then we can say that the number of x values are greater than number of y values. So we are going to consider delta x equal to 1. So this is fixed. So from DDA line drawing algorithm, we derive this formula. Whenever slope value is less than or equal to 1, then we fixed that delta x equal to 1 which means that x suffix k plus 1 equal to x k plus 1 and y suffix k plus 1 equal to y k plus m. In DDA if you got this m value was floating point value means automatically you will get this y value is also a floating point value. So we are not going to do that. So x value is fixer. Now we are going to decide y k plus 1 value whether it is y k or it is y k plus 1 which means that we are going to decide the next value of y whether the next value of y is the same value or the next value that is we are going to decide so x value is fixed y value we are going to decide so we are not going to worry about these m values we are going to decide whether to use the previous value or a next value that is the thing we are going to decide to decide this we are going to use a new term called as a decision parameter that is what we are going to say is a pk so pk we are going to determine is a decision parameter by using this decision parameter you are going to decide the next value of y it should be yk or it should be yk plus 1 that's we are going to use so this is a pictorial representation of what i explained now you consider a line and we are having a point at xk comma yk so next value of x is fixed it is xk plus 1 now we are going to decide whether to use yk R to use yk plus 1. So we are going to choose any one of the point from these two. That is decided by using this decision parameter peak. That is what we are going to identify. So now let us consider a pk. Now a pk is located in between this yk and yk plus 1. So distance from this yk to y is called as d1 and distance from this y to yk plus 1 we are calling it as d2 so what should be the value of d uh, pk is d1 minus d2 pk is located at the location y and xk plus 1 <coughs> so next point of x is fixed because if we are having a point at xk comma yk the next point in x axis is it is xk plus 1 we are going to decide it is yk or yk plus 1 so next point is fixed xk plus 1 whether to use yk or yk plus 1 for that we are using this decision parameter pk so pk is equal to d1 minus d2 now we are going to decide how we are going to use the deciding factor let us consider if pk value is less than 0 if pk value is less than 0 which means that the d2 value is greater than d1 since pk equal to d1 minus d2 pk is less than 0 means the value of d2 is greater than value of d1 if so pk is nearer to yk the value of d2 is greater than value of d1 which means that pk is nearer to yk so the next point is xk plus 1 comma yk you consider another one situation if pk is greater than 0 which means that value of d1 is greater than value of d2 which means that 
pk is nearer to yk plus 1. If pk is greater than 0, then value of d1 is greater than value of d2. So that pk is nearer to yk plus 1. So the next point is xk plus 1 comma yk plus 1. So by using these two factors, we decided when to use yk and when to use yk plus 1. So for this, we are going to derive some algorithm part. So already we know the general line equation y equal to mx plus b and we consider d d1 equal to y minus yk so d1 is the distance between this y and yk and d2 is yk plus 1 minus y so we are going to use that and in the line equation you substitute x values are fixed so xk plus 1 equal to xk plus 1 so in the line equation we are going to substitute m of xk plus 1 plus b so we are marking this equation number it is 3 now we are going to substitute this y value in equation 1 and here I am getting d1 and then and we are going to substitute the equation number 3 in 2 also because here also we are having the y so we are getting d2 so we want to identify pk so we are going to identify d1 minus d2 so here I am getting d1 minus d2 and, and, and then I am performing some calculations and then so in that equation we know that m equal to delta y by delta x so in that m we are going to substitute the delta y by delta x so here i am getting so in the denominator i am getting delta x so to avoid this i am going to multiply delta x on both the sides so delta x of d1 d2 into and here also i multiplied so delta x is included in all these terms and we know that delta x equal to 1 so here i can remove this term so d1 minus d2 is it is pk and here we identify an equation for this pk so if we substitute this equation here I am getting an equation pk equal to 2 delta y xk plus 2 delta y plus 2 delta x b minus 2 delta x yk minus delta x and here I am taking the k term separately and constant terms separately and pk equal to 2 delta y xk minus 2 delta x yk plus c so I am going to group the remaining constant term as a, a separate equation so plus c and what is c we define so for every k plus 1 step I am going to identify the value so pk we identified then we are going to identify pk plus 1 so instead of k I am going to substitute it as k plus 1 so here I am having the k term is changed to k plus 1 and then we are going to identify so every pk plus 1 can be identified by using pk so what you are going to do means pk plus 1 minus pk so that pk can move to the right hand side so we can get pk plus 1 equal to pk plus some value because the previous value plus the new value we are going to identify so i am substituting uh, k equal to k plus 1 i am getting one equation that is pk plus 1 from seventh equation i am getting what is pk and here i am having pk plus 1 so if we subtract this equation this c will be get cancelled so that will be separated into uh, two different constant equation and then here i am getting uh, if you solve these equations we will get these things and we know that xk plus 1 equal to xk plus 1 these values are fixed we are going to decide the y value we can't substitute any value of this y because we, we have to decide whether to use yk or yk plus 1 but we can we know that what is xk plus 1 xk plus 1 is always it is xk plus 1 so we will substitute xk plus 1 and then we will do some calculations and here I am getting the 10th equation if we go through this equation you can understand easily so pk plus 1 equal to pk plus 2 delta y minus 2 delta x yk plus 1 minus yk so we will get that now here I am going to decide so already we uh, decided that if pk is less than 0 means pk is nearer to yk I am going to use yk plus 1 equal to yk so you substitute in this equation equation number 10 now we are going to get pk plus 1 equal to pk plus 2 delta y so if you if you substitute in this equation yk plus 1 is also yk so yk minus yk both the things get cancelled so this term will be 0 so pk plus 1 equal to pk plus 2 delta y it's the 11th equation and if pk is greater than 0 then I'm going to use yk plus 1 equal to yk plus 1 then we will use like this and then here I'm going to get the 12th equation so if pk is less than 0 I'm going to use pk plus 1 if pk is greater than 0 I am going to use this equation pk plus 1 equation and then initially I want to identify the parameter p1 first of all I am going to identify the initial parameter by using that initial parameter I can decide the next value I want to identify p1 after identifying p1 only you can decide p2 
so for pk plus 1 and here also we are having another one pk plus 1 value so to find that pk plus p initial value the addition parameter y equal to mx plus b the initial point we will consider it as x1 comma y1 so a line is starting from the initial point x1 comma y1 so you substitute that y1 equal to mx1 plus b so what is b b equal to mx1 minus y1 so i am rewriting just the equation and m equal to delta y by delta x we all know that so i am substituting there b equal to y1 minus delta y by delta x into x1 so you multiply delta x both aside so delta x b equal to delta x y1 minus delta y x1 so you multiply two on both the sides so we are going to multiply that and i am getting two delta x b equal to two delta x y1 minus two delta y x1 so in that sixth equation i am having this term two delta x b so this is the equation for x1 and y1 so i am having a pk equation in that pk equation you substitute p k equal to 1 so we will get p1 isn't it so we am substituting p k considering the sixth equation i am having this term and instead of this 2 delta x b i am going to substitute this 13th equation and if you substitute that 13th equation you are going to get p1 equal to 2 delta y minus delta x so this is how we are deriving a bresenham's line drawing algorithm so first of all you are going to identify this p1 and then after identifying this p1 you are going to decide if p1 is less than 0 you are going to use this pk plus 1 formula that is 11th formula if pk is greater than 0 you are going to use the 12th formula so in the next lecture we will solve a problem on this thank you for watching keep on visiting my channel thank you